بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد we ask allah the almighty to bless us to be of those whom he is pleased with who he loves and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase our love for him subhanahu wa ta'ala no rahimakum allah that there is no success except with following the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam following his commandments if you want to know about the quran how the quran was practiced the quran was revealed to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so if you want to understand the quran you want to practice the quran then you need to return to the sunnah of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam if you want success in this life as well as the hereafter then it comes with following the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and if you want to be obedient to allah because you know that success then it comes from following the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam qala subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitabil karim wa man yut'i allah wa rasuluhu faqad fa قال قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم واعطي الله واعطي الرسول واول الامر منكم فان تنازعتم في شيء فردوه الى الله ورسوله ان كنتم تؤمنون بالله واليوم الاخر ذلك خير لكم واحسن تاويلا الله سبحانه وتعالى says and we'll just look at the shahid the main part of the ayat for our purpose of being concise is Allah commands us to follow Allah and the messenger so that's if you want success that's if you want to attain taqwa Allah azza wa jal which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us with and we know that, that, that those are the muflihun if you want to be of the mu'minin the believers then it comes from following the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam here's a hadith of the nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam which we've read it many times and we'll just very briefly bring out some benefits of this hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam which is basically apparent already in the nas an abi hurairah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu an abi hurairah abd rahman ibn sakhr radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal sami'tu rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam yaqul ma nahaytukum anhu fajtanibuhu وما امرتكم به فاتوا منه ما استطعتم فانما اهلك الذين من قبلكم كثره مسائلهم مسائلهم واختلافهم على انبيائهم رواه بخاري ومسلم ابي هريره رضي الله تعالى عنه he said that the messenger of allah صلى الله عليه وسلم or he heard the messenger of allah صلى الله عليه وسلم say that whatever i have prohibited you from then be far away from it and whatever i have commanded you with then do it as much as you can for verily what destroyed those people who came before you was their uh many excessive questioning of their prophets and differing with them ruahu bukhari wa muslim in this hadith it shows us the importance of following the sunnah of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so we don't fall into the punishment of those people who came before and and follow in resembling them those nations that came before us who went astray So it shows us that we have to follow the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we should avoid his the prohibitions the things that he's prohibited us from and we should do the commandments that he has ordered us with because that is uh the sharia 
The Sharia is comprised of the Quran, and the, you know, which is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his actions, his statements, his things that he allowed, uh, and his, his manners and so forth. All of that was part of the Sunnah, and all which makes up the Sharia, the legislation that we follow. As well as the ijma, the consensus of the scholars. That's what makes up the Sharia. So then we have to follow the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam if we want success. And we also gain from this hadith that he said, Salawatu Rabbi wa Salamu Alayhi, he said, Wama amartukum bihi fatu minhu mastatatum. He said, and what I've commanded you with, practice it as much as you can. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ittaqullah mistata'tum. Fear Allah as much as you can. So as long as you're striving your best, and you know best how you're really, if you're really making effort, or if it's just something on your tongue. Strive your best to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to do His commandments, and to do what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered us with. And strive your best to stay away from those things they prohibited us from. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, then you, you as far as human beings, you know what your, uh, you have the best idea about your ability, and what you're really making effort. You know that you were a little lazy on such and such, and you allowed for those sins to come in. And you know you were a little bit lax in getting up to go to the masjid. So you know that you opened that door. You know that, but no one else can tell. We don't know, uh, no one else can make those judgments. And so the benefit here, the Prophet ﷺ said that فَأَتُوا مِنْ قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ فَأَتُوا مِنْ هُمَ اسْتَطَعْتُمْ Then do, do, do as much as you can. So be as obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you can and do the commandments of Allah and His Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam as much as possible. Don't be weak in that. At the same time, letting us know that we're going to have shortcomings. And even with our shortcomings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, can, the door of repentance is there. Make istighfar, seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in such a manner that we are weak. And we're created in, stro in, in, in toil. So we have to struggle in this life. And our, 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 we're, we're weak. We easily succumb to sins and our desires. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala realizes that. And that's why he, he leaves the door of forgiveness and repentance open for us. So fear Allah as much as you can. As much as you can. After that, you're not held responsible because you did your best. After your best, what is there? So that is the beauty of Islam and the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the rahmah of the sharia. As you do as much as you can. You may not always be able to fulfill something. But as long as you strove your best, you won't be held accountable. Bidnillah ta'ala. Also this hadith shows us that the people before us were destroyed for asking excessive questions, always questioning the Sharia, questioning their prophets. And how does that relate to us? That relates to us for people who always, who, who go, uh, who are intensive in their questioning. Not meaning that if you have an issue, you should take it to the ulama, you should take it to the scholars and those students of knowledge or those people who are able to answer your questions. That's not what we're saying. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَسْأَلَ أَهْلِ ذِكْرِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge, ask the scholars, if you, do not, uh, if you don't know. However, we're talking about excessive questioning. We're talking about being excessive here. In which, an individual is maybe asking about things that, you know, things that are either not important or they've never happened before, very strange questions, and things that can just open the door of the shaitan. Maybe asking questions of knowledge that is not beneficial. Asking questions about, uh, uh, about things that are evil.
about wicked things, about knowledge which is actually harmful. So there's many ways that people can be just overbearing in their questions. That's why when you ask questions, there's certain manners you want to observe with the scholars and with your and, and the students of knowledge and those those du'at in your area or what have you. That you want to observe certain manners in asking them questions and, and give them background so that they can make a judgment, a correct judgment, based upon what they hear and based upon their knowledge. And if they don't know, that hopefully then they will have the wara and the, 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 the taqwa to go to those people who do know. So being excessive in questioning and then differing with their prophets, alayhim after salatu wasalam, meaning that those people, they differed with the messenger. They asked them questions. They asked, look at the way they asked Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, so many questions, and he told them not to worship the calf and not to, you know, and they, they wanted to know about the color of the calf. Ma lonaha, you know, they asked about the loan, all, about the color of the calf, and all of these things until all that excessive questioning, all that differing with their end, with their their Nabi, Nabi Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, then they fell into shirk. They began to worship that calf. Wa'iyadhan billah min dalaka. That's the most clearest example, beautiful example, which. Uh, gives us a, a clear understanding of this hadith showing us that by, by differing with your ulama uh, differing with the, 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 the prophets and, f and, and for us that means differing with the prophet وسلم, differing with the authentic sunnah that which those sound authentic hadith and differing with the scholars who know those hadith and are practicing and, and, and exhorting people to practice those hadith as long as what they're saying and as long as their fatawa and their opinions are in accordance with the Quran and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah وسلم, then in those situations situations, you, you, it's not permissible to differ with them at all. So by differing with them, you'll begin to go astray. And by differing with them, you're going to the path of destruction, the path of bid'ah and zandaka. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Kulu bid'ah tin dalala wa kulu dalala tin finnar. That every bid'ah, every innovation in the religion and, and worship is going astray. And every going astray leads to the fire. That's what, what more destruction is that? That's the biggest destruction there, ever, there is. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from destruction. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.